Hello, everyone, and happy Friday as we close out this work week. Pastor John joins us uh, remotely over Skype, and our question today is from a listener named Wesley, who has a, a really important work question. Uh, though it's unclear, I don't know where Wesley works, what field he's in, but Wesley writes this. Hello, Pastor John. Recently, my boss offered me and all my colleagues a cash bonus for anyone generating new referrals. I felt immediately lured into the proposition, but my question is this, should the straight up offer of cash be a good motivator for our work? Can the desire for more money, in this case a bonus, be desirous in a virtuous way? Or is this simply the love of money inside of me? How can I tell the difference? One of the most basic things to say is that money only has value in a culture where it can be exchanged for something else. The paper we call bills or money or the pieces of metal that we call coins or the checks that stand for money or the electronic impulses on your phone (laughs) that turn into money somehow. All of that is relatively worthless. It only has value because we live in a culture in which there is an agreed upon use that can be made of these different coins and different bills. You can exchange them for things and for services that you value, or you can give them away because you believe that what others will exchange them for is something you really value and want to promote. That might be a missionary who exchanges them for Bibles to give away, or it might be a research institute that attempts to find a cure for disease, uh, and so on. So money is the capacity to obtain and promote what you value. Now, the Bible is clear that the ultimate goal of life is to magnify, that is to make much of, to glorify, to show to be supremely beautiful, worthy, great Jesus and all that God is for us in him. Everything in the world exists ultimately for this purpose, including money. So the fundamental question for the Christian in regard to money is, does my possession of it or my lack of possession of it or my desire for it or my lack of desire for it, does all of that serve this purpose of magnifying, making much of the worth of Jesus above all things? The way I like to say it is the reason God gives his people money is so that we can use money in a way to show that money is not our God but that God is our God. That's why we have money. That's why we have everything. And I I think it's important to emphasize that God does intend for Christians to use money. Money itself is just money. It's not good or bad. It's just stuff. It's paper or coins or potential for value. Jesus said that the, and this is a really important sentence, And every word in it, probably, especially the word worthy. Jesus said in in Luke 10, 7, that the laborer is worthy of his wages, implying that it's right. I mean, the word worthy implies it's right, it's good, it's just to earn a living and to receive wages that correspond to your work. And evidently, the harder you work, the more wages and the less you work, the less wages There's a correspondence. That's what he means by the word worthiness. The labor is worthy of his wages. This would be called justice. It's just to be paid more for doing a very good job for your employer. And it's just to be paid less for doing a poor job for your employer. And of course, there are other criteria, uh, but that's the basic principle. That would be justice or what Jesus calls worthiness. So I don't deny the goodness and the justice of an employee desiring to be paid appropriately 
for a job well done, whether it's an ordinary wage or whether it's a bonus. The principle is the same, it seems to me. Now, not whether you get a bonus and that creates all kinds of problems, but rather your wage. Why do you go to work in the morning anyway, not just for when there's a bonus yeah. promised? Either way, it seems to me that the remuneration for work done is right. And so to desire it is right, or at least can be right. And the question then becomes, and, and this is the question that was raised, what might make the desire for a bonus or a wage defective, a defective sinful desire for a wage or a bonus? And Wesley asks specifically, can a desire for money, in this case a bonus, be desirous in a virtuous way? Or is this simply the love of money? How can I tell the difference? So let me give a handful of pointers that I think the Bible gives to help us discern whether our hearts are right in the desire for a bonus or a wage or any other material benefit for that matter, some tax return, say. Number one, first, is the project for which the bonus is offered itself virtuous? Are you being asked to do something good? If not, then the pursuit of the money for the bonus is going to be tainted. Second, do you feel a fitting danger that the desire to be rich is a perilous desire? 1 Timothy 6, 9. Those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare. The love of money is the root of all evils. It is hard for those who are rich to enter into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, it's a, just a cluster of New Testament texts that wave a big yellow flag in front of the desire for money to say, watch out, this can kill you. And I'm just saying, do you feel that? It's appropriate to be awakened to that danger lest you fall for it. That's number two. Number three, is the desire for the money an evidence that God is becoming less satisfying to you? Or, to put it another way around, is the desire for the money becoming idolatrous? I use that word because of Colossians 3, 5, that says greed or covetousness is idolatry. Or to put it another way, would you still be content in God, happy in God, if the bonus did not come through? Number four, is your heart continuing to experience the truth of Acts 20, 35, that it is more blessed, more joyful, more satisfying to give than to receive? Or is the desire for this bonus rising to the level that it would be more pleasant to get it rather than to give. Has your heart begun to shift away from X 2035? Number five, does the desire for the bonus indicate that your heart might be losing some of its confidence in the promises of God that are designed to keep you free from the love of money. And here I have in mind Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have for, and then he grounds it in promises. I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Is the desire for the bonus a a loss of confidence in those promises. Number six, since Jesus said in Luke 8, 14, that the riches of the world choke the word of God, do you detect in the desire for this bonus any lessening of your joy and desire to be much in the word of God? Boy, this is such a good barometer. People just start to find the word of God boring when they become more worldly? Or would this bonus enhance your motives for reading and meditating on God's word? As you desire the bonus, as you contemplate receiving the bonus, as you contemplate giving or spending or saving or investing the bonus, are you drawn to the word of God rather than drawn away from it? And, and number seven, finally, 
since Jesus said that your life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions, Luke 12, 15, do you detect that this bonus is encroaching on your very sense of being alive in Christ so that it plays a role, a life-giving role, an energizing role that seems out of proportion with the statement that your life doesn't consist in the abundance of your possessions. Is there a sense that to lose the bonus would actually diminish your sense of life in him? So those are some of the ways that you can test your heart when you are desiring a wage or a bonus or some other material benefit. In the end, the Bible says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 31. That's the bottom line. Will God be more glorious to you, to you? And will he look more glorious through you because of this bonus and what you do with it? Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. And thank you, Wesley, for the question. I hope you find uh, this episode helpful as you seek to honor Christ at work. And uh, even asking this question, I think, says a lot about your character. Well, if you want new episodes of this podcast delivered to you directly, subscribe to Ask Pastor John in your favorite podcast app in Spotify, or by subscribing to DG's YouTube channel. And to find other episodes in our archive, over, I think, 1,500 and some episodes now, you can uh, find all of those, and you can submit questions to us all online at desiringgod.org forward slash John. Well, on the other side of the weekend, we're going to go creedal for a moment. The Nicene Creed from the 4th century tells us that Jesus was, quote, begotten, not made. So why is that important, that he was begotten and not made? And what's on the line if we mess this up? Important conversation to have, and we will have it on Monday. I'm Tony Reinke. We'll see you then. Have a great weekend.